Good morning. We're getting ready to start. I'd like to pray this morning. We're going to pray the worship team onto the stage. Pray that they get there. Let's pray together. Just posture our heart for the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we are we are with you today knowing that you're already with us that constant promise that you are always with us secures us so we don't worship today Lord to bring you close we worship today to open ourselves up more to you to declare your glory to remind you of how much we know of your greatness, of your love, of your might. Our worship is to remind you that we trust you and to remind our own souls that you're trustworthy. Thank you, Lord. I feel led to do this today. Maybe you could just join me in this. Lord, I pray for every church in our area that's meeting today. Maybe you guys have friends in another church or family in another church. Just think about them right now. Father, we bless them today. We ask, Lord, that a supernatural experience takes place in these gatherings. That people's hearts would open. That leaders would be vulnerable today and open themselves up and not preach messages but open themselves up and let Jesus within them pour out like a river of life let that happen across our valley today Lord God in gatherings all across this area we pray for people Lord God that aren't in church today we ask Lord God that you go into their homes Maybe even them sleeping in. Minister to them, Holy Spirit, like only you can. May our worship today be like intercession that goes out into our city, goes out into the surrounding areas, Lord God, and seeds the atmosphere of homes with the love of the Father. having to work today. Lord, bless the work of their hands today. I thank you for increased revenue for businesses and people that have to work today. We bless them and we say that they will meet the Lord in that place. Send somebody or let them be light where they are, Father. Let there be church taking place in restaurants, in retail stores today. Let there be encounters with God in strange places, in places where people aren't expecting to meet the Lord. Father, show up by your Spirit. In hospitals. Father, we pray for those in Chambersburg Hospital today. For those going into urgent care today. Father, we speak healing. In Jesus' name. Come on, let faith arise. We speak healing in Jesus' name. We declare your goodness, God. You are worthy of this praise. Before there are any words on the screen that somebody else wrote for us, Father, we declare from the inside of us that you are worthy. 
that this praise that we give today is not somebody else's that we carbon copy onto the heavens. No, this is worship today that comes authentically from who we are. We love you. And you are worthy of our own song. You are worthy of our own genuine worship today. And whatever that looks like, Lord, accept it as yours. Accept it from us as our love letter to you. I don't want somebody else to write my love letter to you today. I want my heart to write my letter that gives you praise, that tells you genuinely of how I love you. It's the only one that, the only song that I could write. Let it flow from me today, Lord God. Let the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. And may that which is in my heart match what comes out of my lips today. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are. There is really no one like you. There is no one like you. That's why we're here. That's why we do this. May this be an incredible couple hours of being reminded of how good you are. And may our hearts expand. May the capacity of who we are grow to hold and flow out of us more of you worthy is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world worthy is the Father who sent him on our behalf out of love to save us worthy is the Spirit of God who restores our soul and reminds us that we are sealed in the blood of Jesus Hallelujah! 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 To the King! Hallelujah to the King! Hallelujah to His Father! Hallelujah to His Spirit that covers the earth, that fills the earth! Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah!
couple of us that can sing the words to this song genuinely and authentically because we've actually seen the Lord. Or maybe even there's a few of us in this room right now who can actually see Him. But I want to do it together. I want us all to see Him. So while there, we're going to go back into this. But I just want to take some time. Do you know that as a Christian, as a son or daughter of the Father, you have the right and privilege of actually seeing Him. This is not one of these we just live in the dark and we hope that He's real type of things. I want you to know that there is an ability given to humanity to actually see the Lord. Those aren't just words somebody saw, sang or wrote in the middle of a vision. We can actually see Him. So I'd like us to do this. I'd like us to close our natural eyes. You guys want to do this together? Yeah? I don't just want a, a few people to be really excited about what we're doing. We can't sing this song and not see Him. Otherwise, we're just singing hallelujah because someone's telling us to. But when we see the Lord and our instinctual reaction is hallelujah, that's a completely different kind of worship. So we close our eyes now and we open the eyes of our heart. And if that's difficult, I ask that all of us just kind of be with me here, okay? Pray that the Lord would open the eyes of your heart. And the imagination is, is the doorway to the Spirit. I learned that a while ago, and I'm so thankful I did, because I used to think that God would have to give me a vision, but He already did. He gave me my imagination, and when I was a kid, I could dream up anything in my brain like that. But somewhere along the line, as we got older, we had to put that away. Lord, by your Spirit, revive our imagination again. Every one of us has one. There is no inability to imagine in this room. So begin to imagine what the Lord looks like. Holy Spirit, go around this room and enliven our imagination. We want to see you. Come on, picture the Lord. Picture the Lord. Look into His eyes if you can. Come on, don't let this just be an exercise. Do this as if your life depended on seeing Him. Because once you see Him, you'll realize your life does depend on seeing Him. See Him! See Him! Eyes open! Revelation come! Light come! Eyes of the heart open! changed forever. Come on, get that picture on the inside of you. And for the next couple of moments, forget about the person next to you, the person trying to have a conversation with you. Forget about them and be enraptured. Be enraptured by a picture that you see of the Lord and let that picture come alive. Let that picture come alive for you. picture inside of you. See Jesus. See Jesus. Don't let him go once you see him. Don't let him go once you see him. Don't run away once he looks at you.
if you struggle to worship, if you have a worship problem, if you come in here on a Sunday morning and you're like, I don't understand this, I don't understand why we sing, you don't have a worship problem, you don't have a church problem, you have a sight problem, because once you see him, you can't help but worship him. Open the eyes of your heart, Jesus, open the eyes of our heart that we can see you, because once we see you, we can't help it. We can't help but fall on our knees. We can't help but worship. We can't help but give you what you're worthy of. What you're worthy of. Oh God, let your people see you. Oh God, let your people see you. You're beautiful. You're strong. You're mighty. You're able. Hallelujah. 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 You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy.
at his death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted with the train of his robe, filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and two they flew. And one called out to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds troubled, trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filled with smoke. Then he said, Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The one of the seraphim flew to me with burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongues. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips and your iniquity is taken away and your sin is forgiven. I feel so strongly right now that there is anointing for continued salvation right now. Like we don't do salvation calls and that type of stuff, but I feel strongly that salvation as a continual culture so pure and strong right now that the ability to repent and to walk in salvation is readily available to you like a portal open from heaven right here for you to experience what repentance is and repentance comes repentance comes because you see the Lord and you say that's the way to go not because you have a feeling that you're doing something wrong because you could just go a different wrong way. But the Lord reveals himself and his kindness shows you the way and we repent and we move towards him. So what I want to offer you right now is salvation and repentance. Jesus. Because the vision I had of the Lord when Mark said to close his eyes, was the was whipped back and every one of them he said that's part of my glory it's part of my glory and I saw a, thor a, a, a crown of thorns and blood and I saw a swollen eye and I saw Peter's hands and all of it was part of his glory and he regretted none of it not a single one because through it he could say child here is salvation and here is repentance readily available for you so I want to pray with you if you want to live a lifestyle of salvation and repentance come here come here to me I am going to pray this over us Because I know, I know that my life, I know my life would be so much better if I humbled myself to the one that revealed itself to me and pointed me to the way of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. You gave it all.
always tries to roll over my boat When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Yeah, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your
given us freedom. I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness. Living in the light of your goodness, you have given us freedom. in the eyes of Jesus what I saw was no matter whether you were walking closely with him if you're just walking by his side or whether you're on the outside looking out looking at him all I saw was that each and every one of you reflected in his eyes it's just like seeing a prism and he, he never leaves no forsaken no matter where you are how close do you relate to how far apart you think you are he keeps you as the apple of his eye no one is excluded I saw Jesus with his arms open like this and the welcoming look in his eyes was phenomenal phenomenal and it was just, there was no condemnation, there was no accusation, there was nothing but just a pure love and acceptance. And then I heard him say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And I just want to pray for myself, and I want to pray for us here, and I want to pray for humanity at large, Father, forgive us for not allowing you to father us. We have been, uh, yeah, we have just denied you for one reason or another. But right now, we give you permission to father us. We ask you to father us because we know you want to. And you've given us the ability to respond as faithful sons and faithful daughters. So thank you, Father. We love you, Jesus. I'm going to do this very systematically today. I just need some light. Oh, I love these ushers. <laughs> All right. Don't sit down. Stand up. Lauren gave me permission to tell everybody to stand up. So stand up. This is Psalms 34. Sorry for my voice, but this is Psalms 34. Lord, I'm bursting with joy over what you have done for me. That's good. That's a good start, right? My lips are full, are full of perpetual praise. I'm boasting of you and all your works. So let all who are discouraged take heart. 
That's good. Join me, everyone. Let's praise the Lord together. Let's make him famous. I like that. Let's make him famous. Let's make his name glorious to all. Now, listen to my testimony. I cried to God in my distress, and he answered me and freed me from my fears. My fears. My fears. So, there's a level of ownership that you have to take over your fears. You have to say, this one's mine. All right? This is my fear. Because if you don't take ownership of the fear, then you don't really have claim to the victory over the fear that was overcome. You get it? That's how it works. So, what does that have to do with offering? A lot. So, I want you to take a moment. What do you fear about giving to the Lord? Like, what do you fear about your money? What are you fearing? Because you got to take ownership before you overcome it. So take a moment, close your eyes, and confess your fear to God about your money. Do it. Go ahead, do it. I'm, no, I'm serious. Close your eyes and do it. It's like if you're looking at me, you're doing the wrong thing. So, Father, here's my fear. My fear is continually that there's not enough. And if that's my fear, it's not a referendum on money. It's a referendum on how I view you. So I repent, Lord, because that's my fear and not your reality. So, Father, I repent to you and I repent towards you. And I pray that you reveal yourself in the overcoming of that fear. There will always be enough because there's always been enough. You've never faulted me and you've never failed me. So Father, whatever the fears are, the collective fears that are out here, we said these are mine and now we have surrendered them over to you, Lord. We will see abundance because we've repented to you about our position of lack. So Jesus, we give joyfully and gratefully. We will be the ones that say, listen to my testimony. I called out to the Lord in my distress, and he freed me from my fears. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, bring up those overcoming fear testimony offerings. Now the other thing. Um, does anybody have a testimony of what they saw? When closing their eyes and looking for Jesus, does anybody have anything? I would love to hear. There he is. There's Jason. Jason always starts us off. Jason, I'm coming. What I saw, I saw that he, he's uh, giving, he, he's patient, he sees people the way, like, he doesn't see, like, the outside, he's just, he's just so faithful and so good, and he's, he's loved. Anybody else, what they saw? So I saw a morphing face of all of you flashing through, flashing through, flashing through. And then it ended on my face in a mirror, morphing with his. It says, you are part of me, I am part of you. When you think of Jesus, when you think of me, you think of yourself. And I've never thought of it that way before. I always thought that it was something attainable 
far out of reach. But it's not. It comes from within you and just bursts forth. So I just have to stop hiding it so much. So I actually felt frustration rise in me as soon as this question was asked. Um, because I guess I get really logical. And I didn't know what he meant by the question. I was like, does he mean see a person? See the likeness of a person in another person? Like, what does he mean? So um, I went and talked to my sister about it for a second. And then I decided uh, to ask my kids. I just said, have you ever... said, have you ever seen Jesus? And two older, Ollie and Kinsey, right away, they were like, yeah. I'm like, no big deal. And I'm like, what's he look like? <laughs> and Ollie just goes, storm. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I just like lost it. And then um, I asked Kinsey and she's like, he looks like your heart. I was like, okay. And she's like, he's really beautiful. So for me, it just gave me a place to start in my imagination. So So, um, full disclosure, I've always been someone that I feel like I've struggled to see. Like, I, people talk about these, they see the Lord, and they're like, that never happens to me. So I really, I really went after that this morning, and it was, it was crazy, because uh, I hadn't thought about this in probably 30 years. I was probably about the age that my son is, and I remember this one time I was supposed to be taking a nap, and I wasn't, and I, I remember getting this picture, like, in my mind of Jesus, this I haven't seen or thought about this in literally like 30 years. And instantly it came and it was the exact same picture with the exact same grin. And the Lord said, you could see me then. And I was just like, yeah, I can, I can. Anyway, it was just, it was awesome. him being a father to my kids and I'm a single mom right now and I've known who he is to me but I've had a lot of fear about who he is to my kids and so he showed me who he was to my kids today and that he's there no matter what earthly father figure is there that he's really got them. and I needed that today so that's what he showed me today
difficult month with people in jail, difficult people and people creating negativity toward each other. I'm just sometimes appalled by how we can treat each other. And I, I go on with that forgiveness piece. I really do, Diane. Thank you. But then I thought about 13 years ago, my daughter decided to, to, uh, to adopt a Korean child. And Logan is 13 now. But she asked God to sell one of those cows on the hillside so that they could adopt because it's expensive and they now have two Korean children. So when you think of the cattle on the hillside and you think of that ever-flowing amount, and one of the reasons I was late this morning because I stopped at my office and saw how much more I could give this morning than what I had planned. And it's abundant. It's ever-abundant. And I'm always amazed at what seems to come forth. Okay, so how many of us know that there's power when we gather and pray together? Oh, yeah. So um, the Lord has really just put it on Nikki's and my heart um, to initiate a prayer night among us. Um, we would like to begin that in September on the 18th. It's a Tuesday evening, and we plan to meet here at the church building um, from 7 until 8.30. And... The vision or the purpose of what we see this time looking like is for us to um, really just be together intentionally seeking what is in the Father's heart um, and specifically as it relates to our family and what God is doing among us. And then, so we're actually going to kind of have it be a six night session um, bi-weekly that starts again on the 18th of September 7 to 8.30. Um, is there anything else I'm missing? Um, we really just um, want to press into the Father's heart and dig deep. We've been talking a lot about um, finding our foundation. And I really feel like um, that as we find that foundation, as we hit bottom uh, together, um, we want to we wanna be able to build something that can go very wide and very high. And um, I think it's really important that we do that together. So we're really excited to see what God has for this time. I think the only thing that I was going to say was similar to what she just said, was that you know we think we've gone deep, 
there's so much more that the Father wants to take us into. And I think that this could be an opportunity to go super deep with the Father and um, really um, see and hear his heart for um, the family here. And after our six nights, as, as the Lord leads, you know, we'll, we'll do what's next. But um, that's just kind of what we're going to start out with. So if you have a heart for this kind of um, ministry for, to the Lord and just to be together in seeking his heart, please come join us. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hey, hey I love, oh, dang, you're awake today. That's good. Um, just really quick, guess who's back? Back again, the youth are back, say amen. So, sorry, I had to do it. Um, so, as you can see, we are coming back again. Um, we're going to have our youth meeting tonight, well, this afternoon. That's the only thing that's going to change. There's two things. The time, we're having it from 3.30 to 7 p.m. And location, it's going to be at the Gorshman's house. Um, the address is 90 Tyler Drive. Um, the info as well, it is, it was posted earlier in the Who Family page on Facebook. I will repost it today just in case. Um, but please, uh, they are going to be providing food for us. The only thing that we need to bring is snacks and a drink, please. So parents, help with that, please. Those who are old enough to do it by yourself, got carries, don't forget that. Dylan, don't forget that. All of you guys, you know, yes. And chairs, please. So we're going to have games. We're going to be playing around and all that. But then um, we're going to be a little bit intentional with each other. Like, I do want to spend a little bit time of praying for each other. And I will be asking you guys, and this is for you to start to think about it. What do you want to see in your schools this year? What do you want to see in your life this year? to happen because we I want to agree with you and I want all of us to agree with you because I want to see those things happening in your life, in your school, your friends' lives, every what, whoever is going to affect your decisions in a good way, I want to see all those things happening. So be thinking about that since now on. So I hope to see you all there. I even saw that there's going to be new ones, and I love it. I, I really love the idea. So please, come and join us, 3.30 through 7 p.m. about that. Snacks, drinks, and chairs. Love you guys. Okay. All right, I have random thoughts for you. I don't have one cohesive thought, so maybe you guys can make it cohesive. Proverbs chapter 3. I woke up this morning with the word wisdom on my heart today. And every once in a while, I feel like it's really good to visit this. If you've noticed, if you've been around for a while, about once a year toward the fall, I don't know why it happens, but the Lord really puts wisdom on my heart. I think a couple years ago, we actually did some Bible studies devoted to wisdom. But I want you to see... Some of this. Actually, I want to start in four, and I'm going to go back to three, and then I'm going to go to 20. It's just, you're just going to have to work with me. I want to talk to you like a dad for a little while, okay? I know some of you are older than me, so uh, you'll have to trust the Lord. But I want to talk to you like a dad for a little bit. Proverbs 4, verse 1. Hear, O sons, the instruction of a father. And give attention that you may gain understanding. For I give you sound teaching. Do not abandon my instruction. Is it pride to say that I believe that I do verse 2? Okay. Because I, you know, I, I know that the Lord... I don't want to make this about me at all. So just give me a moment though. I know that the Lord puts like extra attention on those who teach. Okay? I do know that. And I want you to know that when I bring teaching to you or encouragements to you or when I preach, I don't do it lightly. 
I bring them to you in such a way because I love you and I love the Lord. And I really do want to see you walk in the best life possible. What God originally created you to walk in. That is the, uh, the mission of our church is to connect you to your original identity in God and then you be able to walk in that. So I want you to know that I feel confident standing before you and the Lord that I give you sound teaching. And so I ask you humbly, do not abandon it. When I was a son to my father, and I was, this is, a, this is Solomon talking about David, but I want you to know that for almost 20 years, I walked humbly in a relationship with a spiritual father. Some of you know that. And it was a... Uh, It was long, but it was very fruitful and rewarding to me. And I remember there was a season of time where I first gave my heart to another man where I actually told him that, look, for a season of time, I'm not going to do anything or make any decisions unless I talk to you first. And it started out as just six months and it lasted almost two years before I had finally turned my heart from the ways of this world and the ways that had been taught to me to the ways of the Lord. And I began to make decisions and I began to appraise my life according to the Spirit of God through a man. I actually think that's perfectly legitimate for us to spend a season of time being trained out of the ways of the world, out of the ways of things that other people have taught us and be trained by someone who lives by the Spirit of God to live accordingly. Amen? Amen. And Solomon talks about this here. He says, When I was a son to my father, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother. That means he was young, and it means that he had attention. He had his father's attention. Verse 4, Then he taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast my words and keep my commandments and live. You know, I can say that verse 4 is not a popular mindset in 2018. I don't know of many, like specific, I'll just go with Americans, who would willingly say or receive those words, I should say. Because, like, in America, we're, we're the land of the free and the home of the brave, and damn it, we got a declaration of independence. I'm free. No man can tell me what to do. I'm my own man or woman. I'm going to do this thing. And I want to tell you, that's a recipe for disaster. That is not the spirit of that, of America, or even what really, if you ask me, of what the Lord says to do. I actually think it's very wise and very holy to have someone say to you, listen to me, and you listen now, not just anyone and everyone. I'm going to tell you, there's some people that you should not listen to. I can give you a list. But there's a much shorter and important list of people that you should. Give wise ear to my instruction. Let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live I actually believe there are certain people available in our lives that if we keep what they say in our hearts, we will live. I mean, even back when we were two and three years old and mom and dad said, don't do certain things, we lived because we listened. Right? We didn't get hit by the car. We didn't get burned by the stove. We didn't fall down the steps, whatever that is. And now today, now that we're adults and we're all mature, just like we lost our imagination, I believe we've, in many cases, lost the ability to listen and learn and revere the words of mothers and fathers who love us and walk in a spirit of wisdom. So today I want to kind of reinstill that in all of us. Verse 5, acquire wisdom, acquire understanding, do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. This takes boldness for a man to say this. Do not forsake her. I want you to know Solomon refers regularly to wisdom as a girl. Do not forsake her and she will guard you. Wisdom protects. 
When you're looking for protection, when you feel insecure and unsafe, the greatest thing you could ever seek out is wisdom. And it will, or she will, let's, let's do it that way. She will guard you. She love her. And she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom. <laughs> you know when you're beginning to walk in wisdom when you ask for it. And I want to tell you, look, I, I'm not saying I'm the sage in the room. Otherwise, I could grow a long white beard and I'd be more apt to say that. But I want to tell you, there are very few people who consistently ask me for wisdom. Very few. How many people over 50 are in the room? Raise your hand. How regularly are you asked for wisdom? Frank, how often? Almost daily. Awesome. Somebody else? Daily? Okay, maybe I'm really not wise then. Because I'm not asked very often. Oh, I'm not 50 yet. You're right. You're right. I'm only 48. Rarely? Rarely? Somebody else. Who raised their hand over here? David, how often are you asked for wisdom? Quite often. Quite often? Awesome. Bob, you raised your hand. Not very often. And you're teaching. Chris, weekly? Good. I'm praying that that would increase among us. I'm praying, and I'm not asking you to ask me for wisdom. Please, don't hear, I, I, I don't want that, to be honest with you. But the spirit of it is so good. The spirit of seeking it out, the spirit of wanting it, of desiring it in your life. And the beginning of it is to ask. The beginning of wisdom is to ask for wisdom, to acquire it. Acquire understanding. <clears throat> Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. Oh, sorry. All right, sorry. Verse 7. Prize her, verse 8, and she will exalt you. Prize wisdom and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a garland of grace and she will present you with a crown of beauty. Hear my son and accept my sayings and the years of your life will be many. I have directed you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in upright paths. When you walk, your steps will not be impeded and if you run, you will not stumble. Does anybody want that for your life? When you walk, your steps will not be impeded. If you run, you will not stumble. Take hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not proceed in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not pass by it. Turn away from it and pass on. I want you to know, you know the counsel of wickedness. And it's not so much the words that are spoken, it's the spirit of them. And the Lord gives you discernment to know the spirit of the words that are coming towards you. I want to tell you, you need this if you are connected to social media. If you listen to the radio, if you read newspaper articles. Some people, I don't even know how many people do that anymore. But you need discernment to know the spirit of a thing. And I want to tell you something. There are very few outlets anymore that have the Spirit of the Lord sourcing the information that is being brought to you. Even those of you that are going to school, to, well, not tomorrow, Tuesday. When you go back to school, I want you to ask the Lord to discern the spirit of the information that's coming towards you. And this is what happens. Wisdom can protect you. Wisdom can literally be a guard over your heart that when your teacher is teaching the wisdom or the instruction that's coming from them and the spirit of it, the, the Lord's wisdom can guard it so that what actually enters into you and becomes part of you is sanctioned by the Lord. But there has to be an intentionality when you do that. Do you hear me? 
when you're even speaking with someone you love. You have to actually ask for discernment. There's many times where I'm talking with my wife or even talking with my kids or talking with people that I look up to and admire. And even in that, you have to sense and know the spirit in which they are speaking to you so that that which is brought into you is life for you. Amen? Amen. It is on us to discern this. It is on us to know what life is that's coming into our lives. Now, I want you to go now to chapter 3. Verse 13. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her profit is better than the profit of silver, and her gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. How many people remember that song from the 90s? And nothing I desire. I mean, I, I can tell you, most people think that that song's about the Lord. It's actually about wisdom. Now, we've applied it to the Lord, but the reality is this is what's more precious than silver and more comparable than gold. She, wisdom, is a prophet that's better than silver, her gain, gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing, say it with me, nothing you desire compares with her. That's powerful. Let's keep going. Long life is in her right hand. And in her left hand are riches and honor. Anybody want to hold her hands? Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. Who could use some pleasantry and some peace? All of her ways. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And are happy, and happy are all who hold her fast. How many people like to be happy? How many people, honestly, you don't have to raise your hand on this, have not been happy for a while? Acquire wisdom. I know that sounds like it's not very spiritual. I know it doesn't sound like all warm and fuzzy. Like, Mark, give me the Hallmark movie version of what makes me happy. And I'm telling you, this is truth. If you want wisdom, sorry, if you want happiness, be wise. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who hold her fast. This is the key. For me, verse 19 is the key to everything I've just read so far. The Lord, by wisdom, even the Lord operates by wisdom, founded the earth. And by understanding, He established the heavens. By His knowledge, the deeps were broken up. And the skies drip with dew. One more verse. Then I'm just going to talk to you. I want to make sure I got this right. No, oh, anyway. I'm not going to look for it right now. It's the verse that says, by wisdom a house is built. It's somewhere in Psalm 23 or 24. If someone wants to find it for me, you can do that. And her foundations are established by understanding. Verse 19 is key for me. So I just want to take a moment right now. What time is it? 11.50. I want you to mark this moment in your brain right now. I want you to stop everything. Stop every plan you have. Stop every action you're currently doing. I want you to know, even though you're sitting in this room right now, there's action going on. You've got things that you're involved in, things you're going to leave here and do. On Monday, it's Labor Day, so probably most of us are going to rest. But on Tuesday, you're going to just start right back in the thing. Stop. 11.50, Sunday morning, stop. The Lord started everything with wisdom. I want to encourage you right now, don't go any farther 
Don't take another step in your relationships, in your work, in your investments, in your risks, in your steps of faith, in your plans. Just stop and ask the Lord, do I have the wisdom to move forward? To take the next step in my marriage? To take the next step with parenting my children? With what I'm going to have to do in work? If what I'm going to have to do for what I see for my life and the ministry that God's created me for. Lord, do I have the wisdom? And if I don't, I'm not moving until I do. Because I want my life to be established. I want to have life. I want to have happiness. I want to have this joy and this peace that I don't have right now. So I stop in this moment all of my planning, all of the wheels that are already turning. I push the stop button on it right now, the red stop button. Do it in your, while we're in our imagination, while we're practicing it here today, just push the red stop button on it. Everything's going to be okay. The machine's still there. There's oil in the tank. It's going to be okay. Hit stop. Lord, do I have wisdom? Because she's more precious than jewels. Most of everything I'm doing, it's for silver and gold. And, and before I ever start, I don't have the thing that's more precious than silver and gold. So I stop right now in this moment and I ask, am I married to her? Am I married to wisdom? Am I jealous for her like I'm jealous for success? Am I jealous for her like I'm jealous for the person that I want closer in my life? Do I want wisdom so much that I'm willing to stop things in my life that are unwise? that are built on sand and on soil, that when the torrents of life come, I, everything I've built washes away. I'm stopping in this moment, and I will not go any farther until I have built on wisdom. I want you to know there's peace settling in right now that wasn't there before. There's a person's name that's coming to mind that you should call or talk to before you move forward. There was wisdom in what Diane said about, you know what? I'm not moving forward until I go repent. Until I go ask for forgiveness. I'm not going to build my relationships on this pain and hurt in my heart anymore. I'm going to get this healed and then I'm going to move forward. The spirit of wisdom is in all of that. We think of wisdom just as it relates to money and business and work. The reality is we need wisdom to run our lives. To author our choices. Wisdom right now is speaking to some of us and asking us this question, do you even know who you are? Do you really know who you are? Because if you did, would you add these things to your life? If you really knew who you were, you would not take this computer and try to hammer a nail with it. Do you know who you are? Do you know why you were created? And if you don't, don't push the green button. Pause and get wisdom. The one who spoke you into existence, the one who laid the foundations of the earth by wisdom is looking in your eyes and wants you to know what you need to know so that what you build lasts forever. You were not meant to blow away like dust. 
You and what you have built was to last for generations and be built upon. So right now in this moment, we acquire wisdom. Spirit of wisdom flow in this place right now. Have your way among us. We humble ourselves. And if we have to, we say we don't know how to go. We're not sure. Honestly, I'm not sure. But I'm asking for wisdom because wisdom starts. I've said this many times to many of us in this room. If you try to get wisdom when things are falling apart, I promise you, you will hate wisdom because wisdom will tell you, let it die. Wisdom will say, let it fall apart and we'll build again. Because wisdom doesn't fix, wisdom founds. Wisdom builds deep, digs deep, lays good foundations and then begins to build. It doesn't fix what's broken. Do you hear me? I told you this many times. I remember one time in business, I was really struggling. My wife and I bought a second restaurant. I called in people that had great wisdom. And every time they sat down and every time I showed them the books and I showed them everything we were doing, they had no answers for me. And I was so frustrated. I was like, these are the smartest, wisest people in my life, and they've got nothing. And then I realized why. You can't fix this. You didn't start with wisdom. It was the hardest lesson I ever had to learn. And from this moment on, and from, sorry, from that moment on, I don't start anything. I don't even lay out plans until I ask for what we just asked for. I won't do it again. Because... I know what it feels like to have what I have built, what I have put my blood, my sweat, my finances into, blow away like dust. And it won't happen again. It's too precious. I'm too important. My kids are too important. The, the investment that the Lord has put in me is too important to not build right. And to not live right. So if you needed this, this was your pause. This was your reset. This was your moment to realize, whoa, what I thought was precious ain't anything compared to wisdom. And when I have her, I have everything. And I want to tell you, incredible things are attracted to people who seek wisdom. And wisdom is not complicated. In fact, I have discovered that the more I walk in wisdom, the less complicated things are the less complex life is. If your life is complex and you can't figure out how to go, I promise you, you don't have wisdom. Because wisdom sees clear. Wisdom does not have 17 steps, A, B, C, and D, and some other uh, tributaries that live off of that. I can promise you, wisdom is A and B and maybe a C. It's amazing because the right things are attracted and things, I can tell you, success loves wisdom. Things that work right love wisdom and they're attracted to people that walk wisely. I have discovered in my life that as wisdom becomes the rock of my life, things that I thought I had to work for and figure out and struggle just go and all of a sudden I'm realizing the verse of Matthew, verse, verse of Matthew 6 that says, seek first the kingdom of God of God and His righteousness and all these things will be. I'm like, oh, yeah. And I realize how life can be. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Life is not supposed to be consistent struggle. It's not. Yes, you will have occasional struggle. Yes, you will have to push through certain things. But if you go from one struggle to the next, I promise you wisdom's not your friend. You are to be going from glory to glory. Not from struggle to struggle. 
I want to tell you, I question your God if you go from struggle to struggle. I, I question who you worship. I question who you're devoted to if you go from struggle to struggle. Acquire wisdom. Let the Spirit of the Lord, who is wisdom, reside on the inside of you and you don't push the green button on any area of your life again until you are settled that the foundation is wisdom. And then you push the button. Amen? Does that feel okay? I can tell you that there are different times in my life where I sought wisdom and I hated every moment of it. I hated it because it was so painful. Because wisdom is very direct. Wisdom does not care about your feelings. Wisdom doesn't even care about how much you have done or how hard you worked or how much you spent. It doesn't. It just, it's just like, look, I can't feel that with you. I can't, I can't do that or I'll agree with something that's destroying you. So instead, I'm going to present this to you and it, it cuts and it hurts, but it's like this most skilled brain surgeon in your life. It's like, it's so good for you. That's why somewhere here, oh yeah, I started in verse 13 of Proverbs 3 because I didn't want to hurt you guys. But here's verses 11 and 12 of Proverbs 3. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, he chastens, he disciplines, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. It's so painful to be corrected. It's so painful to be faced with wisdom, especially when you didn't seek it at first. But I want to tell you, it is life to your bones. And the pain is for a moment, and the life and the health and the, the rejuvenation that comes into us is forever. So let's stand. This is my annual get wisdom, people. Because I care about you. And I care about what the Lord's given you. And I don't want it wasted. Yes, I know he owns a cattle on a thousand hills like he replenished it. But let's not waste it foolishly. So Father, I bless every person in this room with the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of Jesus. I pray that you would have sight beyond your current moment that you're in. I even ask, Lord God, that with, without regret, that we would be able to see into our past times when we started without wisdom and it ended, and it ended in train wreck. I want us to see it clearly. And again, not out of regret, but that we can learn. And Father, I pray that right now, and I know it's not 11.50 anymore, but we'll remember 11.50 on September 2nd, 2018, that we hit the stop button and we asked for wisdom or we committed to asking for it because we won't, we won't have train wrecks be our legacy anymore. So I bless you with that. I bless you with being patient as wisdom is applied. I bless you with being humble and asking where it needs to be asked. I bless you with letting things fall that need to fall. I bless you to start over. I bless you with a grace to forgive yourself because you messed up. And I bless you with a wisdom to start again because you can. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. You can start again today. Just don't start without her. And I promise you, the generations after you will say thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Have a great week.